So how do I get patients for my plastic surgery practice? In this video, I'm going to share some proven practices that you can employ to fill your calendar. My name is Frank, I'm the founder of Saga Pixel. We do digital marketing for plastic surgeons in both the United States and Europe. I have a full playlist that gets into different aspects of plastic surgery marketing that I'm going to link to in the description. Make sure you check it out after this one. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. I personally will be checking them. Method number one for filling your plastic surgery clinic's calendar, Google Ads. When someone performs a search like rhinoplasty New Jersey, the first thing that they're gonna see on the page are gonna be these ads. Now you may be one of those people that say, oh, but I never click on the ads. I assure you, people click on the ads and it will drive consults. I had my meeting today with the Google Ads team and I can tell you that in the last 30 days, we had a campaign in Los Angeles driving $130 rhinoplasty leads, as well as a campaign running in Central Florida that was driving $50 rhinoplasty leads. People do click on the ads and they do fill out the contact form. Now there are a few great things about doing Google Ads and a few not so great things. So let's talk about some of the good things first. To start, you don't need to spend a fortune to start advertising. A typical plastic surgery practice that wants to kind of dip its toes into uh, Google Ads as a lead generation channel will often spend in the ballpark of about $1,500 a month. And usually the ones that want to scale it will spend upwards of four to $15,000. Why? Because it's pretty much a dollars in, dollars out marketing channel, which is extremely scalable, meaning spend 10 times more in your Google ads and you'll probably get 10 times more leads. This is not the case with channels such as organic social media or SEO. You can start small with Google ads and PPC and then spend more as it starts work. The next pro of Google ads, it starts working immediately. Unlike SEO that can take anywhere from a few weeks to several months to start driving any sort of ROI for your plastic surgery clinic or frankly any type of business, Google Ads will probably start working the first week that you run it and almost certainly drive some leads the first month. There are very few marketing channels where this is the case. Now let's talk about the downsides to Google Ads. Con number one, as soon as you spend it, it's gone. In other words, the second you stop spending on your Google Ads campaign, your leads are going to dry up. On the other hand, spending money on billboards over several years, people will remember the billboards, your name will stick in their memory. Spending money on SEO, your website will continue to rank well in organic search long after you've invested in building the pages, writing the content, and building the links. But none of this is gonna be the case with Google Ads. The second you stop spending, your leads are gonna dry up. Con number two, over time, if you do SEO and Google Ads, you'll find that your Google Ads cost per lead is going to be several orders more expensive on a per patient basis than they ever were through SEO. So if you're in a market where you're getting $150 or $200 leads for rhinoplasty or facelift, through SEO, you're likely to see a $50 to $75 cost per lead once you eventually get your website ranking well. Which brings us to the second channel that you can focus on to drive leads for your plastic surgery practice. SEO. I have another video that goes into more detail about SEO for plastic surgeons. I recommend that you check it out after this video. But in a nutshell, SEO has three parts. First, we wanna make sure that your website is optimally structured where it's passing page rank over to your practice pages that you wanna get ranking. Google can optimally crawl and index your website. The second part is about maximizing the relevance of the content in your website to the searches people are performing. So if you wanna rank for a keyword like Lip Fillers Atlanta. You have a page that's optimized for Lip Fillers Atlanta and not just our services or a generic fillers page. This is referred to as keyword mapping. I also have a video on that. Check out the playlist. The third part of SEO is maximizing the trustworthiness and authoritativeness of your website. This is really comprised of earning backlinks from other websites and frankly, sending positive user signals to Google. Like Google wants to see, do people seem to like the content and the pages on your website? If they do, 
will start showing you more frequently in search results. If they don't, they won't. Now, the third channel that you can explore for marketing your plastic surgery practice actually dovetails with your SEO, and that is SEO-driven content marketing. Basically, this means that we're going to produce content that answers the kinds of questions that people are Googling, which you're gonna need written words. You're gonna need a blog in order to accomplish. But let's be honest, nobody really reads blogs anymore. They wanna see video. So what we often do is partner with our plastic surgery practices, help them to produce video that answers the types of questions that their patients are Googling during the research phase, getting it uploaded to YouTube, embedding it on the website, getting a transcript generated, optimizing it for search, and ultimately becoming the trusted authority that people want to see when they decide to get their procedures done. I recently met with a plastic surgeon that specializes in gynecomastia surgery. He has men come to him from all over the United States, entirely on the back of YouTube videos. Basically, if you are going to YouTube and researching anything about gynecomastia or gynecomastia surgery, you're going to see one of his videos eventually. And he is the kind of personality that really comes across on camera, does well, but ultimately it's all testament to the power of video and its ability to earn trust and make people feel like they know you and you are the surgeon that they wanna have for operate on. Now, when you combine that with SEO, where people are, dis are discovering these videos when they're Googling, then you can throw gasoline on the fire. So let's say you're Googling something like gynecomastia versus chest fat. People are turning to Google to figure out whether they have gynecomastia or if they're just overweight. And this is an incredibly effective way to get in front of them. The fourth channel, social media. Now there's some subtleties to marketing a plastic surgery practice on social media that you may not be aware of. In social media, you have discovery platforms and you have engagement platforms. Discovery platforms are the type of platforms where people mostly consume content by accounts that they're not really following. TikTok will be one of them. YouTube can be as well. On the other hand, you have engagement platforms like Instagram. Most of what you see on Instagram in your Instagram feed is from accounts that you are already following. For a plastic surgery practice that wants to possibly grow its injectable side of the business, getting people to follow you on Instagram could be a great opportunity for you to entertain and educate them and get them back in the door. Instagram is also often part of the buyer's journey. After a patient discovered you through organic search or Google ads, maybe before they fill out your contact form, maybe after, maybe after they had their consultation with you, there is a good chance that they're going to go and check your Instagram. They want to see before and afters. They want to learn more about who you are and what makes you tick. Your social media channels, in particular Instagram, could play an invaluable role in you converting some of that traffic into actual consults. I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please consider giving it a like. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments because I will be checking them. What?